honor. Hallelujah. The law of honor. What is honor? Honor is high respect or great esteem. Amen. Amen. To honor God is to revere and fear Him. Only the Lord is deserving of such ultimate glory or reverent fear. We can go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 this morning, verses 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10. We all know the, the word. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Yes. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, yeah. and your vats will brim over with new wine. Amen. Yes. So it means when we honor the Lord, it's then that we will have our pans filled and overflowing to the brim. Amen. So meaning this there is a reward in honoring God. Yes. Hallelujah. There is a great reward in honor. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. I just want to uh, quote one example in the Bible from Esther, the book of Esther. We know the story of Esther that uh, there was a, a, a king What's his name? King uh, Ahasuerus, yes. And the queen was Queen Vashti. Queen Vashti dishonored the king by refusing to parade before the king because there was a feast in the palace. So when Queen Vashti was called to come and parade before the king and the guests, Queen Vashti dishonored the king because she refused. She refused, she dishonored the king. And by so doing, she lost her queenship. And that was taken by Esther. Esther found favor before the king. Yeah. And yeah. she ended up being the queen. Because Esther placed the interests of the king first before his. Amen. Yes. Esther honored the king and she was rewarded. She got a reward of being a king. Hallelujah. She found favor in the sight of all those who looked at her. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's always all, I mean, a prize we get when we honor, when we honor God. And also uh, King Solomon. We remember that King Solomon offered a thousand bulls. A thousand, thousand. You slaughter one, two, three, four, even ten. You know, it's a tiresome job. So a thousand were, were slaughtered, were offered as a sacrifice in the honor of God. Hallelujah. And on the very same night that uh, Solomon had offered those ten bulls, the Lord visited him. The Lord visited him. And he said, what do you want me to do for you? And Solomon said, we all know he asked for wisdom. Hallelujah. He asked for wisdom. And the Lord granted him more than what he had asked for. Hallelujah. So there's always that, I mean, Price we get when we honor God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not about Him, it's, about, it's, it's for us. Hallelujah. God says He doesn't need a, 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 our money because all the silver and gold belongs to Him. Hallelujah. So when we honor Him, it is us that gain more than He does. Hallelujah. Bless you, brothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to call upon Pastor. Ricardo to come forward. Shall we honor him once again with our hands? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wonderful day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it's such a great privilege to be here in the house of God yeah. to give him glory, to give him the praise because he's good. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Beloved, I'd like to 
share with you all this morning a very powerful testimony. This is what has happened in my life. It is meant to encourage John in your strength and to strengthen it, especially at a time like this. Here we, we've seen it all. 2021, we've seen it. We've seen the coronavirus, which is going out so bad. Unfortunately, we know why this has happened. The world has forsaken God, unfortunately. And this is what happened. It happened in Rome, immorality. Was it empire to fall? But we, the church, we are interceding for our fellow brothers in humanity. We are praying to our God. And I'm just chasing me now involves me. I'm an attorney by profession. I lost my job last year. In Sumatra, I was working in the courts there. I lost my job because of COVID. A part of that was because I had backslid backslid in my feet. But in that same process brought me closer to my Lord. I started to come here to this church, get my life right, whatever bad habits I had, I put it away. I forsook it all to serve Jesus. I've been coming to this church now after so many years. I was here between 2011 and 2013. Unfortunately, I had to leave. I got employment elsewhere. And I came back with that prodigal son. I found my salvation here. Where I got a job. Dynamics uh, means 
something that is constant in activity means constant activity it means something that is making progression hence my title of the of the series that I'm that I've done last week kingdom dynamics because remember the Bible says of his kingdom there'll be no end of his kingdom there'll be no end there's no end I shared with you last week in Luke's Gospel where Jesus said the kingdom of God comes not by observation. Nor do men say, here yeah, it is or there it is, for the kingdom of God is within you. Now you must remember that the kingdom, it is not a visible kingdom, it is an invisible one. And that kingdom is residing on the inside of you, you are carrying it. Hence, if you find, you know, you find when you're reading the Gospels uh, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John throughout the Gospels, and you look at the teachings and what Jesus spoke about, he spoke about the kingdom. And you and I are kingdom citizens. And we must function with a kingdom mentality, a kingdom conscious. I want to share this with you that you awaken to a, having a kingdom consciousness i remember some time back i shared with you on the subject of becoming righteousness conscious now i'm sharing with you of becoming kingdom conscious in other words to be awakened to the kingdom if you can realize what you can if you can realize what is on the inside of you? Then you'll be able to change things around you. You'll be able to change your environment. Say amen to that. Amen. I want to go with you quickly, if you can, go with me to the book of Colossians. <clears throat> Colossians, chapter number one. See, Jesus' preaching was on the kingdom, and what Jesus did was he demonstrated the power of the kingdom which he brought with him to the earth. Hallelujah. He demonstrated that power. The gospel that we've received, the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is not a gospel that is void of power. The gospel of Jesus Christ, that is good news. Yeah. It's the gospel of power. It's the gospel of the kingdom, the good news. The kingdom has come. Yeah. In Colossians chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 12, Paul writes, he says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Your qualification does not come from men. Man did not qualify you. It is God who qualified you. Okay. He says, giving thanks to who? The Father. Yeah. Whose Father? Our Father. That means you're not just a nobody. You're not an orphan. You have a father, a father who resides in heaven. He says, giving thanks to the father who has qualified us, has past tense. He's not saying giving thanks to the father who will qualify us or might qualify us. He says, who has past tense. He qualified us by the blood. When you identify with the blood, you identify with the family through which the blood runs. You see, 
we have that mindset you find many times people are speaking of generational curses the day i receive jesus christ of nazareth the day i made jesus my lord and my savior i disconnected myself of generational curses and i stepped into something that is called generational blessing i have abraham isaac and jacob as my that's my lineage somebody giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us for what? To be partakers. I'm a partaker. I'm a partaker. I partake of. I'm participating in. What is it? Of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Of the inheritance of the saints in the light. That means everything that was destined, the God destined for the saints, I'm a partaker of that. That's my, listen, God has given you an inheritance. That's your heritage. Who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has, past tense, delivered us. I'm not waiting for him to deliver me. He has, past tense, delivered us. From what? From the power of darkness. And conveyed us. Oh, and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. You have been conveyed. You know, I'm reminded of a conveyor belt. You know, in a, if you look at a manufacturing setup, if you go into a factory, you find that to get materials from one section to the other, yeah. you know, it's kind of difficult very often, but a conveyor belt makes it easy. And this is what the Bible says, He's conveyed us. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son. Amen. You see, He's brought you into and that is where you reside now. You no more dwell in darkness. You now dwell in light. You see that? Partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. So we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. And we are now in a new kingdom. Tell somebody, I'm in a new kingdom. You're in a new kingdom. And you know what? Everything you desire and everything you need is found in this kingdom. Yeah. You don't need to go look for it somewhere else. Come on, talk to me, somebody. It's all in this kingdom. Everything that people desire on earth is found in the kingdom. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Wherever Jesus went, people were in need. They were in need of healing the way you need. Come and talk to me. People were hungry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But wherever Jesus went, he manifested the power of the kingdom. And that kingdom provided everything that people needed. Yeah. In the wilderness with the multitude, they were hungry. They needed something to eat. The kingdom provided a meal for them. Okay. That's the, listen, if I can put it in, you know, in everyday language, it's the biggest bribe. In humanity. It's the biggest bride that has ever been held. The kingdom provided. People that were blind, people that were sick, people that were weak, people that were without strength. The kingdom provided all those things that people needed. I mean, the disciples of Jesus. Jesus even told them, don't worry about what you will wear. The kingdom provides for that. Don't worry.
whatever way you stay, the kingdom will provide for you. This is this kingdom. Everything you desire, everything you need on earth is found in this kingdom. Because listen, this earth was created by one who controls this kingdom. Yeah. Oh Jesus. And now he resides on the inside of you. So that you can fulfill God's original plan which was given to man in the beginning when God said to man, fill the earth and subdue it. The Bible says the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge and the glory of God. That is why he placed his kingdom within you and I. So that through you and I people will know that there's a God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your health is in this kingdom. Your economy is in this kingdom. Your wealth is in this kingdom. Your joy is in this kingdom. Your peace is in this kingdom. Your strength is in this kingdom. Your blessing is in this kingdom. Everything comes to you from this kingdom. Hosea 4 verse 6, God says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. He didn't say my people perish for the lack of money. He didn't say my people perish for the lack of jobs. He didn't say my people perish for the lack of food. He said my people perish for the lack of knowledge. When you have knowledge of the kingdom, when you have knowledge of the world of this kingdom, Oh, you will to become a force to be reckoned with. Talk to me, somebody. It wasn't money. It wasn't position. They're not destroyed because of a lack of uh, position. They're destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Now, if God has translated us out of the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, it means that there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness and there's the kingdom of light. We were once in darkness, but now we are in the light. Say amen to that. There are two kingdoms. And because there are two kingdoms, it means there are two different ways of talking. In other words, speaking, there's two different ways of speaking. There's two different ways of thinking. There's two different ways of behaving. There's two different ways of responding. You got that? There's two different ways. And when you look at these two kingdoms, they are not equal. They can never be equal. The one kingdom is superior and the other one is inferior. The superior is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us that darkness could not comprehend the light. Darkness cannot comprehend, can't stand. It shines too bright. So the light overcomes, overpowers the darkness. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You see in the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, let us go there. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Proverbs 14 verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. You see, we come from that kingdom where it seems right, but the end thereof is death. 
You see, it seems right to the man, but it's not right with God. There's a big difference. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, we find the disciples say to Jesus, they ask him, why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus said, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It is given, listen, it is given. So if it is given, it means it needs to be received. If something is given, it has to be received. If someone gives you something, unless you receive it, you can't use it. If somebody blesses you with a gift, they give you a gift, and they've sent it to you, and it's arrived at your post box, but you haven't had been to open your post box. And they ask you, have you received the gift I sent you? Your answer obviously is no. Because you haven't received it yet. Only when you've opened it and you've received it, and you've got it. It becomes yours, it's yours. Jesus said, you see, to those that are in the darkness, it's parables. But it's, it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. In other words, it's been given to you to know how this kingdom operates. Come and talk to me. If you were to say to your cousin, Who's not born again? You know, I tithe of my income. You won't understand what that is. He'll ask you, what's that? And you say, no, 10% of what I have, I give to God. I give to the church. That man will ask you questions at 10% to the church. Are you mad? Are you crazy? It's foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is wisdom from God. It is wisdom. Somebody says something bad about you. And yet you don't let it worry you. You continue to smile, to love that person, to embrace that person. You continue to pray for that person. And those who know that this, you know, this person despises you, yet you still love them, they ask, are you so foolish? How can you? They don't understand how this kingdom works. Because in this kingdom, you love those who hate you. You pray for those who spitefully use you. Someone tells you, oh, so and so, you know, said this about you. Say, praise God, I got them on my prayer list. <laughs> Don't they tell you, you see, there's two kingdoms. There's two different ways of responding and acting and behaving and speaking and thinking. If you're in the kingdom of darkness, your response will be, I will show them. I'll show him. Who does he think he is? I'm going to roll up my sleeves. Now you're going to beat the person, you end up in jail, and now you're blaming the devil, you put up a chandelier in there. No, the devil didn't put you there. Don't give him glory for something he didn't do. Your stupidity got you there. Your ignorance got you there. You perish because of the lack of knowledge. You don't know how this kingdom operates. Somebody, you know, does something or says something and you get angry quickly, you just snap it. Hey, just listen, then you, you must question which kingdom are you in? 
the Lord is slow to anger and he's your father and if you say he's your father and he's slow to anger why do you then whose whose son are you really whose daughter are you really
you'll always be confused. You'll always be tossed to and fro with every wave. You believe everything. As long as it sounds spiritual enough or good enough, you'll put up with it. No, if it's not truth, don't put up with it. Because what you tolerate, what you accept, it's going to be a it's going to become a part of your life. You just say, I won't accept that. Yeah. This word is incorruptible. First Peter 1 verse 23. The word is incorruptible. You are born again. Of the incorruptible word. Incorruptible. This word will break you. You see, the word of the world will break you. Because the enemy, he wants to break you. John 10.10, 10, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to destroy you. But the word, Jesus, he has come to give you life, life in abundance, abundant life overflowing life. Hallelujah. The Word is God. Now my question to you this morning, is there anything that God cannot do? Can you name one thing, one thing, name one thing that God can't do? Name it. Name it. There's nothing. So if you need something to be done for you, you've got to get some word. Get word. And put the word. Put God. Put God there. Come on, talk to me. I mean, the book of Job says there's hope for a tree when it is cut. At the first, at the first scent of water, it will bud again. So the enemy may have chopped you, may have cut you down, but you just get some word. At the first scent of word, you're going to bud again. There's hope for you. There's hope for you. It's not the end. Hallelujah. The word is designed to bring back order to your chaos. The word is designed to do that. Where everything is in chaos, the word will bring order. You remember Ezekiel the prophet? You remember the, the valley of bones? What was it that brought order? Word. Jesus said, The words that I speak to your spirit and your life. Ooh, this word, this word has a life of its own. And when you take this word and you deposit it into your heart, into your spirit, you become this word. You become one with this word. You begin to think like the word. You begin to talk like the word. You begin to walk like the word. This, this is what's within you. Amen. This word is loaded with miracles. Genesis to Revelation. Miracle upon miracle upon miracle. This word, this word was designed to bring you your miracle. This word has been designed to bring you your miracle. Whatever it is that you need, the word has been designed. You don't need to go and run to Prophet Joseph to pour oil on you. Because all that is, listen, you're going to mess yourself in oil, you're going to get home, and then you're going to look for some stain remover to get them clothes clean. What you need is the word of God, the truth of God's word. The word will bring faith to you. And once you have faith, you're able now to make that divine exchange for your miracle. That divine exchange for your breakthrough. And that's how this kingdom.
kingdom operates by faith. This kingdom operates by faith. There's no other way that this kingdom works. Your tears won't get the job done. Your crying will never get it done. Your complaining and moaning will never get it done. Because remember, two kingdoms, two different languages, two different words. Remember the spies who went to spy out Canaan. You remember the spies? Them spies came back. There were ten who had an evil report and two, only two, with a good report. Those ten died. The two lived. Why did the ten die? They came back, they moaned, they groaned, they complained. After seeing how God split the Red Sea, seeing how God brought the manna, God brought the quail, seeing how God renewed their clothes, man, their children, the, the shoes of the children grew in proportion to the children. For 40 years, they were in the desert. Every year, if that child's foot grew from a size 5 to a size 6, that, come on, if the foot grew from 5 to 6, the shoe grew in proportion to that. The clothes grew in proportion to what they were growing. Obviously, that's a really cold. After all of that, they still complain, they still cry, they still moan, they still groan. Then God says, I'll show them. God sent forth serpents. You remember that? The book of Numbers? The serpents started to bite them. You see, the words out there will bite you, cripple you. Then Moses cried out unto God, and God instructed Moses to raise up the brazen serpent, the bronze serpent. And everybody who looked to this, they looked, they were healed. Now we still find people complaining, groaning, moaning. Christians complaining, groaning, moaning. What's happening? What's happening? They're not getting anywhere. The stories of the world are biting them. They remain in complain and remain, praise and be raised. You see, complaining will get you nowhere. You see, you're moaning. Moaning is a sickness. It's called monolitis. I don't want to catch monolitis. Come on, somebody. So this is what God says. As Moses raised the brown serpent and everybody looked and were healed. Can you look to Calvary? Can you see the work of Calvary? Can you look to the cross and be healed? Can you look to the cross and be saved? Can you look to the cross and be delivered? Talk to me, somebody. Your miracle is in the world. Your miracle is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of life and death, Proverbs 18 verse 21, the power of life and death lies way in the tongue. Lies in the tongue. Hallelujah. You know, that's why the enemies got people so much. You say, oh, I'm dying to have a burger. I'm dying to have a piece of cake. I'm dying to have a cup of coffee. Guess what? You're going to die. Because you think, you know, everyone talks that way. I'm dying for this. You're going to die. Oh, I'm going to catch the flu. You're going to catch it. Words. Words. children they just don't grow up. All these children they just don't come right. All these children I give up. Words. If your child is out of line, out of order,
Start taking the word and speak the word over your children. Talk to me. Speak your word over that child. I don't care, maybe your neighbor told you they saw your child wear or what they saw your child do. You, for, you listen, you cut off from that. You take the word and you speak your word, the word of God over your child. Stop speaking what society has said about your child. Come and talk to me, somebody. It's time we started speaking what God says. I don't care what the doctor has diagnosed your child with. You don't say my child has this. You take the word of God and you speak the word of God over your child. If somebody says there's no hope for your children, I'm here to tell you this morning there is hope. There's hope in Jesus. You can take the word of God and speak the word of God over your children. Talk to me, somebody. Your children will live. Come and talk to me. The Bible says, listen, listen, the word of God says great shall be the peace of your children. Great shall be the peace of your children. The children have great peace. It's time we started speaking peace over our children. Miss all the chaos. Miss all of what's happening in our, in our tertiary institutions. People are saying our children are gone away with no hope. Speak the word of God. People are saying South Africa there's no hope. Our country is going down. No, speak the word of God. 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 You remember when God was going to Sodom and Gomorrah and he stopped there by Abraham. And God said, I can't hide from Abraham what I'm about to do. And God revealed it unto Abraham. And then Abraham began to intercede with God. He said, Lord, if there's so many, will you still destroy it? He said, no. If there's so many, will you still destroy it? He said, no. If there's so many, will you still destroy it? He said, no. Abraham forgot to go down to two, to Lot and his family, or even to one, to Lot. He just stopped him. He was interceding for him. What am I trying to say? You could be the only person that believes South Africa can be saved. You could be the only person that believes that things will be okay for South Africa. God says, I sought for myself one who would stand in the gap, but I found none. You could be that person that will say, Lord, I'm going to stand in the gap for my country. Standing in the gap means I turn away from the chaos and I turn to God, I go to the wall and I intercede on behalf of my country. You could be the only person that you can intercede for your country. You can intercede for your generation. You can intercede for your family. Talk to me, somebody. You can intercede, you can intercede, you can intercede. Listen, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Come and talk to me. You are in the kingdom. And in this kingdom, there's a king. He's the king of kings. And you have, listen, listen, you don't need someone to usher you into the king's presence and into the king's court. Come and talk to me, somebody. He's made a way of entrance by the blood, by the blood, by the blood. You have a way of entrance into the most holy place, into the holy of holies. The veil of the temple has, was, was torn in the physical, but when we look at the cross, we see the veil of his body, which made a way for us to enter, so that we might come boldly before the throne of grace and receive mercy, obtain mercy and receive an abundance of grace to help us in our time of need. You can go straight to the King. You can go straight to the Father. You can go straight to Him. You can make the divine exchange. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you this morning that you have counted us worthy. You have counted us worthy. You have qualified us, O oh Lord, to be partakers 
of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Thank you this morning, O oh Lord, that you have delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us, O oh Lord God, into the kingdom of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, O oh God, for your blood. Thank you for the power and the authority of your word. Oh, we bless you, praise you, exalt you, Lord. In you, O oh Lord God, we are made whole. We are made complete. In you there is no want of anything else except more of you. Thank you, Jesus. How we love you. Make his 
face shine upon you. Tragic great success. In Jesus' wonderful name. All the church of God said, Amen. 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 I receive everything you've given me. I receive everything you've given me. Oh, praise God. Amen. God bless.